History will show that I'm probably the only individual that applied to one medical school. When I went to Cornell University on the graduate school, I was told by my uh, advisor that he didn't think I would get into Cornell or any other medical school. Came home at Christmas time and there was a letter from Cornell University Medical College saying I was accepted for the class of 1950. Well, in those days, all the fraternities played a lot of practical jokes. And I was sure this was a practical joke and I, I didn't even keep the letter. I threw it away the second week in January. I got a call from Mr. Silver, uh, don't you want to come to Cornell? And I thought this is part of the joke. And I said, Mrs. Lennon, is this for real? And she says, absolutely, Richard, you better let us know, otherwise you'll lose your place. And then I collapsed. <laughs> I've known Dr. Silver since really I was an intern, a resident here when I was involved in the care of his patients. And uh, really he was someone, uh, even at that time as an impressionable young physician, who I recognized was somebody who I could learn from. And one of the areas that Dr. Silver got me uh, engaged in and supported and continues to support is our involvement in what was then the Cancer and Leukemia Group B or CALGB that has now evolved into the Alliance for Clinical Trials in Oncology. That group is an area where he uh, really started his career and has been a pioneer uh, over many years. So I was fortunate to be involved in the development of cooperative group trials since the very beginning. In fact, I knew how to type and I typed the first protocol for the treatment of acute leukemia, which I'm very proud of. One copy is in the archives of the National Institutes of Health and the other copy is in the archives of the New York Presbyterian Hospital. When I returned to Cornell, uh, we were invited to participate in this cooperative group. I was chairman of the Leukemia Committee after a number of years proving my worth. We brought new concepts to the Division of Hematology and Oncology at Cornell. We were also able to expand our interests to lymphoma. Dr. Morton Coleman, still uh, with us, uh, working actively in the division, became expert at this. I first met Dick 50 years ago when I arrived at Cornell as a hematology fellow. In those 50 years, Dick has been a mentor, a colleague, a co-researcher, and a friend. Dick has made uh, an enormous impact on the field of hematology and oncology. He was one of the first to recognize the importance of targeted therapy, particularly in chronic monocytic leukemia. But more importantly, Dick has made major contributions to the betterment of Cornell medicine. He has labored hard and mightily uh, to make this school a better place uh, for all of us. He deserves great credit uh, for what he has done for Cornell medicine. And while Cornell Division of Hematology and Oncology and our attending physicians, our fellows, our residents, all played a key role in the finding of a drug known as imatinib, which was highly effective for the treatment of chronic myeloid leukemia. I have no way of describing the thrill of offering this drug to a patient who thought he or she was going to die and then Miraculously, that drug led to a perfectly normal life, to have babies and watch their children graduate from college, uh, get married, uh, be successful in business. That to me was the epitome of what a doctor looks for as a physician in treating patients. It was a thrill and still is. If I could describe Dr. Silver in one word, I would say energetic. And I see the enthusiasm he puts forward uh, with his work in medicine. He's been somebody who has, I think, impacted many people. He is a Renaissance man. Not only is he an accomplished physician, clinician, researcher, and writer, but he is also an accomplished musician and an almost accomplished tennis player. Dr. Silver, uh, it's really great to be here with you as we celebrate your 90th birthday. And going forward, I just wish you all the best for the future. Dick, these past 50 years have been a lot of fun. Thanks for being a mentor, a colleague, a co-researcher, and most importantly, a good friend. Congratulations and happy birthday on your 90th. I hope my colleagues think of me in two parts. One, as an individual, a person of integrity, 
And I hope they think I'm a, not just a good physician, but an excellent physician.